Welcome to Jesus Revealed. My name is Zintle Mube and I'm with Bishop Eric Gons. Bishop, welcome and thank you for being in our podcast. Thank you for having me. Great. Honored to be present. Yeah, so uh, our scripture reading today is taken from the book of John, chapter 1, verse 29 to 234. And the, and the crux of it is where John then reveals Jesus as the Lamb of God. In your view, what is the significance of John declaring him as the Lamb of God? First of all, thank you again for having me. The, the essence and the title itself of this broadcast and the content that we're going to talk about today yeah. is excellently in synergy. When you talk about revelation, you talk about God exposing himself and unveiling himself to be more clear to humanity. Yeah. So when John the Baptist actually makes that statement, behold the Lamb of God, we get another revelation of who God is on earth. Mm. And that's a key essence for God, that somebody's not only got the message or being used to deliver the message, yeah. but that people are beginning to see the message. Mm. Not just hear the message, but see the message, because we're visual by nature. Yeah, yeah, yeah. No, agreed. And, and I guess just to go then into our second question, looking at how John then even, I guess, layers the revelation to say he was there long before he was. And I guess that then sort of points then to the deity of, of Jesus. But then in, in your mind, what does that mean then when John reveals that layer of Jesus existing long before him? I, the essence of that really blows my mind because John the Baptist's birth is even the revelation of God at, at its best. Yeah. For John, uh, John's parents, uh, Elizabeth and Zacharias, not to be able to have a child then for God to allow his miracle birth to take place. Yeah. I often remind people, before we get here, we've come from. I want to repeat that clearly. Before we get here, yeah. we have come from. We are actually from the mind and the thought of God. Mm. And God, who already knows us before our existence, brings us through the channel of flesh to arrive into what he's provided for us. So John now doesn't know where he's come from, even though he knows he's come from God, yeah, gets yeah. a revelation from the God he's come from to talk about the God who has arrived. And that tells John before it tells the public the deity of God. Yeah, it, yeah. You really cannot profess Christ and profess the deity of Christ without having a revelation of who God is first. Yeah. He's not just a textbook. You have to have an experience with him. So if you remember when Mary and Elizabeth meet, there's a leap yeah. that takes yeah. place. Yeah. There's the anointing already in the life of a John the Baptist. Mm. I like to suggest John the Baptist knew him before he was born. <laughs> <laughs> That's good. Based on the internal connections of the two. Yeah. And then when he says, Jesus is here, he who has come is he who has been before I was, mm -hmm. that alone reflects back to the fact that what you're seeing is how God himself plans to work out the salvific experience of humanity. Yeah. What you're seeing is sacrifice walking among us. Yeah. What you're seeing is God's love for us so powerful that you need to catch the revelation. And because I'm afraid that you wouldn't, I've been given the privilege to declare it. Yeah, yeah. So if you're not, is it he or is it not he? Should we really look for another? That's who it is that has come. Indeed. Deity Indeed. is so important. Yeah, yeah. And now I actually want to look at that contrast between the deity that we just spoke of and the magnitude of Christ being God, but then as well, firstly, being declared as a lamb. In, in your view, how do those two things work together? Because I guess from a natural mind, when one looks at a lamb, it, it, it's something that is subject to either the, the direction of the shepherd or, or just, I guess, the, the larger, I guess, herd of, of sheep, naturally. Uh, and, and now looking at the deity and how that is a magnified and exalted position. I think it's one of the best animals that God could use, number one, because of the various definitions behind the lamb. Yeah. And one of the key issues behind it is the meekness. God is calling us to be a meek people, not foolish, mm -hmm. but meek, yeah. humble, but not foolish. 
<laughs> and, and the idea of the lamb, lamb is also known to be sweet. Yeah. Now, let me just make it clear. I don't like lamb. I don't <laughs> like eating lamb. I don't like the smell of lamb. Yeah. But at the end of the day, its purpose is sacrificial. Mm -hmm. And not only is it sacrificial, it's not going to fight you. Yeah. So you have to correlate that or create a parallelization between Jesus in the garden as the lamb. Yeah. That says, you know, I really would like to know something, God. Can you by any chance remove this cup from me so we can work this thing out a different way? Mm -hmm. And then he says, but nevertheless, not my will, but thine be done. Yeah. Lambs are not going to fight. Mm -hmm. They will do what the shepherd says to do at, at the ultimate conclusion. They are always guided by the shepherd. They're actually known to be, unfortunately, dumb animals because they, are the, they, are, they have the consistent need of guidance. Yeah. What Jesus is doing as lamb is not just sacrificial, but he's teaching us mm -hmm. how to have the consistent need of the guidance of the Father. Indeed. And there lies that whole correlation piece, uh, the power of us learning how to be humble with each other, humble to shepherding, humble to being guided, yeah. and then realize that you will be sacrificed in order to be revealed. Mm, mm. And sacrifice definition keeps unveiling itself in so many different ways. We, we understand a f sacrifice from affliction. Yeah. It's out of the affliction of a sacrifice that makes us realize how tough we are. Yeah. You never know how strong you are as an individual until you have gone through some serious stuff. Let a blade hit you and realize you can outlive the blade. Yeah. Yeah, be stabbed yeah. and realize that you've been pierced to the side like a sacrifice Jesus on the cross yeah. and you're still living. Sure. You didn't die right away. And there lies Jesus as lamb of the world. Key behind it again, if he doesn't do it, no one else could. Mm -hmm. And the only way God gets to do this is to remove himself from deity and become flesh. Yeah among us and the flesh he becomes among us has to become flesh in order to be sacrificed because you cannot sacrifice deity yeah yeah and before then we we get to our parting shot I, I just want to then there's a point that you raise around how then it's also an example how him as a lamp is an example to the everyday believer and i i just want you to just zero in on that for 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 a second more especially in in going through trials going through persecution going through the day-to-day -day living of, of a christian in this time and in this present world it is our response then that of a lamp to what you're suggesting yes because that's why i was careful with the usage of i'm a lamb but i'm not a fool yeah I'm a lamb, but I'm not retarded. I'm a lamb, meaning I'm meek. I'm a lamb, meaning I'm relaxed. I'm a lamb, meaning that I'm willing to submit. Yeah. I'm a lamb, meaning I'm willing to be guided. Mm -hmm. I'm a lamb, mm -hmm. meaning that if I am considered to be ignorant, to be the, the foolish of the, of the animals, I'm willing to be educated so I can be the best of the animals yeah. at the end of the day. And there lies our Christian walk. Every single day of our lives, there ought to be an evolving of our development and our growth and our unveiling of Christ in our lives. Yeah. Most of us get caught up with our Christianity on Sunday morning. Mm. And we get caught up with our Christianity on our attire. And we get caught up with our Christianity in terms of our position and whatever title we're using. It has nothing to do with that. Those are just the ancillaries to this movement. Yeah. It has to do with our internal washed in Jesus' blood experience. It has to do with our willingness to be slaughtered. Yeah. When you submit to a shepherd as a ch in the church, if you are a true sheep, you are willing to be slaughtered by your shepherd mm. because a, a bastard child would rebel against the shepherd. Yeah. That's firmly why I firmly believe that when the lamb, when you look at Abraham going up to sacrifice Isaac, Isaac has no problem with going up, even though he says to the yeah. dad, you know, see fire, see wood, but where's the sacrifice here? What's yeah. going on? Yeah. Doesn't realize you're the sacrifice. He doesn't fight his father when he's on the, on the wood. Yeah. Why? Because that's his dad. And his dad knows his, the best for his life. But if it was Ishmael, there would have been a fight. Wow. wow. Okay. <laughs> and the reason the lamb also is up there is because... The thicket is in the right place. Mm -hmm. If he had the other one on the other side, 
there would have been a fight. Yeah. But whatever God has prepared to become great has to first become humble. Indeed. Has to become meek. So that's our lives every single day. Not just with our pastor, but our church. Truth be told, with each other. Mm -hmm. I'm going to go a little bit further real fast. Yeah. Even with the world. Because okay. Christians are only okay. good Christians, at least as they define it to be, as good as they can be to each other. Yeah. Christians are only Christians and as good as they think they can be because they're in the church. Our true Christianity is expressed when we are dealing with the unsaved outside that the light really shines mm -hmm. to see whether you really look like Christ or not. Yeah. Can you handle me when you've seen me as a whoremonger? How are you going to treat me now? Oof. Or are you just sending me straight to hell? That's good. That's good, Bishop. Last one then. Looking it. at everything that we've, we've looked at, the various points that we've touched on, and looking at this specific passage, what would you like the listener, the viewer, to, to walk away from? And just from a key points. I would like you who are out, who's out there to consider John the Baptist's words that should not be superficial, but jump off the page into your spirit. He heralds the revelation of God about God. He literally presents to you what God looks like in the flesh. John the Baptist actually opens your eyes to something he did not know himself. And he is now revealing to you to see what you don't really realize is the image of God. Remember the book of Genesis tells us that God talks to himself and he talks to himself through his son in the majestic and says, come let us make man after our own image. God therefore is saying, let's imagine and create and develop man to be the imago Dei, God on the earth. That's Adam right there. That's why Jesus is called the second Adam. So what John did, what he did this for you and I, he did it by revealing to us, in case your revelation monitor is not working, let me help you learn revelation quick. Your salvation is here do not look for another. Every help, every desire, everything you need is in this man. Behold the Lamb of God who takes away the sin, not sins, the sin of the world. Listen to what John said. Your life will be a whole lot better. Mm -hmm.